This conference will now be recorded. Hello, so today we're going to talk about the editing of your clinical dashboard. When you're in point click care, you're going to click on clinical and then click on dashboard underneath the care management column. A new screen is going to appear. You're now going to click edit layout. Another new screen will populate and it looks like this. When you see this screen, you will click new view. Clicking new view will open up the ability to name this view and you're going to name it anything you want. It can be your name, it can be MDS coordinator, it can be reimbursement, anything that differentiates it from the other views that might be used by other people in the facility. And then click save. Now your newly named dashboard is gonna show up under your views, but you're not done. Notice that the word main is black and also in the current view description, the word main is there. This means you're still seeing the setup of the main dashboard. You do not want to make changes here since this is probably the view that the director of nurses is using for AM meeting. So instead you need to click your newly named layout to make the changes. Once you do that, this is what you want to see. The MDS, whatever you've named it, should now be black and you should see that matching in the current view description. Now you know that you're in the view that you're looking for to make your changes. You're going to put check marks next to dashboard items to select them. So for instance, diagnosis notification, current CMI, ADT, POC assignment status. And you can use the gray bar on the right to scroll up and down to find any additional dashboard items that you're not seeing on the screenshot. Minimally, I want you to select these seven. You can select others, uh, but minimally everyone should have these same seven that they're going to select. So the POC assignment status, antibiotic medication, PRN orders, daily summary, ADT, current CMI, and diagnosis notification. Once you've selected these seven items below, you're gonna drag them into an order that looks like this on the right. Again, if you have more than seven, if you want to use more than seven, that's fine. But your, look at, your layout should look like this, and then the additional things that you select would be at the bottom, so that we all have a standardized desktop that we're using. <clears throat> so you drag your items into the location by selecting it, holding down your mouse, and dragging it up, dragging it down, dragging it over. I can't do that on the screenshot here, but when you're in PCC, you'll see that this is, um, that you have the capability to hold your mouse down and pull it. Notice that anything that has a times two is on a line by itself. That's because these are made up in two columns and some of these, some of this information is in smaller boxes. So that allows you to be able to put them together where things such as antibiotics, PRN orders and diagnosis need a longer space to be able to indicate the dates things happen, the name of the patient, how many times something might have been administered. Once you move all of your items and your dashboard looks like this, your layout looks like this, you're going to click save and move on. So you're asking Mel, why do you care what my dashboard looks like? Because it allows you to be more efficient and also allows us to be able to make suggestions into systems such as capturing any waiver appropriate skill and any CMI opportunities. So when things are missed, we're able to refer back to this very standard process and say, is there something else that we could have added to this dashboard uh, or are we not looking at a dashboard item the correct way? Uh, and we can provide some additional insight into that. So this is what the dashboard looks like once you've done it and you're in yours. Again, remember, you want to select it even when you're viewing it every day. You want to make sure you're picking the right view. So we're looking at the MDS coordinator one that I created. Now, for example, we can from one place address all of our census related issues. So as you look at this, um, this should be one of your first orders of business each day, which is why ADT is up on top. When you see room change, you should be asking yourself, did they move to the hot unit? Do they have Med-A or managed care if they did move to the hot unit? 
does this result in isolation being able to be captured for MED-A? If you see a discharge date, do you need to adjust any of your ARDs based on that discharge? Do you need to add a discharge because it was unplanned? Do you need to delete any of your unnecessary MDSs to uh, prevent your, the rest of your team from working on assessments that are going to ultimately be deleted because they're not needed? We don't want them wasting time on working on something that won't be used. When you see the words payer change, do you have your NPE set? Do you see changes from yesterday that you expect? So if you had meetings yesterday and you talked about somebody's last covered day, are you seeing that reflected on today's dashboard? When you see that there's been an admission or a readmission, was the ARD set on admission? If not, figure out why it is that that got missed by your admissions team. You need to set it at that time to make sure that we don't have any default. Has the payer been verified? Is there an entry in the system? Does there need to be an entry? Was it an interrupted stay? Look at the census to make sure that you match with the business office. Oftentimes, a lot of the red that you're seeing on your PCC scheduler is based on the fact that you have done one thing with the MDS and the census has been uh, reflecting something else because of the business office. And then you can adjust the number of days that you're looking at. So during the week, Tuesday through Friday, you may just be changing this to one day so you can just see the current information. When you come in on Monday, change it to three so that you can see what happened over Saturday and Sunday. And then if you've been on vacation, then you might change it to five to seven days just so that you can review what's gone on since you've been gone and make sure that nothing was missed. Next, we have the antibiotic medications ordered in the last seven days. So from the same place that you just dealt with census, you can now see who has started on an antibiotic and for what. So for instance, this person started on Doxy. If you were to click the plus sign next to that, which I'd already done for the screenshot, you would now see that this was for pneumonia. Is this person on Medicare? Are you still in a window to adjust a five-day ARD? Would the pneumonia diagnosis add anything worthy of an IPA? Has a baseline temperature been established for this person? Do they have a fever? Any nebulizer treatment started? And if they're not on Medicare, are they appropriate to skill in place under the waiver? Now we move on to the PRN medications. And you care about that, why? Particularly during COVID, you care about it because pain and achiness are one of the early symptoms. And alone or in conjunction with other symptoms, you might determine that the person warrants being observed and assessed at a higher level than those who are being watched routinely, and you may decide that they're appropriate to skill. How often do we include pain management as one of the areas of observation on our Medicare certs, with or without COVID? Your review of this information and discussion with your IDT and those interventions can support that level of skill for pain management. So pay attention to the frequency of these medications being administered. When the numbers are higher in nature, look at the actual levels of pain and the routine orders and determine whether or not we need to make changes, not only to the pain medication, the routine and the PRN, but what about the care planning that goes along with that? So now again, that is supporting a level of skill. And isn't it depressing to be in pain? When we're giving additional pain medication and giving it frequently, shouldn't we be looking at the patient's depression scores? When was their last PHQ? Are you able to adjust your five day or might you consider an IPA based on new PHQ information? Remember that a frequency score of 10 captures the depression end split in eight out of 26 of your nursing levels. Continuing with PRN medications, you also are concerned about this because it can alert you to the other early symptoms of COVID, cough and nausea and vomiting that warrants again, observation and assessment at a higher level than those being watched routinely and may result in your ability to be able to skill them under the 1135 waiver. So are they already skilled? Can they be skilled? And then finally, we have the POC assignment status. 
So when you look at some of this data, you're seeing that on the night shift, we have a 66% uh, compliance. We have a 0% in one of the units uh, out of 111 things, zero things were documented. I was told that ADLs have been a focus across the organization and that as part of your morning meetings, this is reviewed and discussed. My first question is, is it? Realize that next, the next morning is a nice spot check, but it's never going to replace the real-time process of a nurse checking this before the end of the shift. That should be the argument with the IDT. What are you guys discussing each day? For those of you that are consistently at 100%, awesome, great, wonderful, 100% compliant. What's your percent of accuracy? Because that's what's going to move the needle in one direction or the other but you can't improve accuracy until you establish compliance. I had regionals get ADL in service from each of the facilities and it wasn't pretty. And it definitely didn't demonstrate a focus on these issues. So we need to do a better job with that. If you're not part of the solution, then you're part of the problem. And we will be part of the solution. And the dashboard is just a start. So let's use it to work smarter and not harder and free up some time to focus on where the data takes us. Remember that data is either wrong and you need to get it fixed or the data is accurate and you need to respond to it. So please have your dashboard set up by November 16th. I may randomly call you after this date and have you show me your dashboard. It honestly only takes a couple of minutes to do it and then you need to force yourself into the habit of using this dashboard every single morning when you're coming in if you've not already been doing that. So thank you and have a good day.